Hi everyone and welcome. Today we are solving the absolute distinct values exercise from Codility lesson number 15. So we are given an array of numbers that are set in non-decreasing order, so it's in increasing order. And if we take the absolute values of these numbers from our array, we can count distinct elements number. For example, 5 is the first distinct element. Then we have number 3, which is the second element. Then number one, the third, zero, the fourth element. Three was already counted, so we don't count it again. And then our last and final element is number six, which is the fifth element for this example. So in total for this example, we have five distinct elements, five distinct numbers, and this will be what we will return as a final result. An easy way to solve this problem is first by making the absolute values of the array A. Remember that the array A numbers are arranged in non-decreasing order. And when we do the absolute values, we get something like this. Then we can sort the uh, absolute values of A in increasing order again. And then we can check each consecutive uh, element if they are different. If they are, we can increment a counter of distinct elements. If they are equal, we skip incrementing the counter. So here we have our first element in zero. So we have one element, then we have number one, which is different than zero. So our counter is two distinct elements. Then number three, we have three distinct elements. Then we have number three again. So we don't increment our counter in this case because these two elements are equal. Then we have five, which is different than three. So our counter is four. And at the end, we have number six, which is different than the previous number. And at the end, we have five distinct elements for this example. The solution is very simple. It works perfectly fine. It's very efficient. However, it's not the caterpillar method that is described on the Codality website for this particular lesson. If you want to use the caterpillar method, there is a different algorithm that we can describe as follows. We will consider at the beginning, let's call the head and the tail of the caterpillar that we are imagining for this array. So it's the first and the last elements of the array. The given array is sorted in non-decreasing order. So the elements are going from the smallest up to the greatest value. We're going to compare these initial elements, the first and the last element of the array, and see which one has a greater absolute value. And in this example, it's the number six. It's greater than number five, which is the absolute value of minus five. And in this case, we are going to read the element that is just before the greater absolute value. So we're going to decrease, let's say, our pointer or shift our interest to the number that comes just before the number six. So here we have number three. And at the same time, we're going to increment a counter that started with initial value equal one because we have at least one distinct value in the array. And then we have a new distinct value because three and the absolute value of minus five, so five are different, so we can increment uh, up to two different elements. Then we compare the absolute value of minus five, which is five, with three. So this one is greater in this case. The number five is greater in this case. And for this, we are going to shift our interest to the element that comes right after the minus five element. So we have minus three. And then we compare the absolute values again. But before that, we are going to increment one more time our counter of distinct elements. So, so far, we have three different distinct elements, five, three, and six. Then we are comparing minus three absolute value. It's equal to three with the number three. So they are equal. So in this case, we don't increment our counter of distinct elements because these two absolute values are equal now. So they are not distinct. And the reason we are doing this procedure is that for every element, we are going to check for this symmetry around the uh, zero in the array. For example, when we started with minus five and six, six is greater than the absolute value of minus five. The symmetrical element of minus five would be plus five, which is less than six. And this is why we are trying to check before number six, if we have a number five, for example, in which case we are not going to increment our counter of uh, number of distinct elements. And if it's not the case, so we jumped down to number three, which is less than minus five in absolute value. So here we are going to check the element that comes after minus five. So it's going to be something greater than minus five. 
looking for something symmetrical for number three which is minus three and in this case we found an element that is like this so we found minus three and three it seems that in this problem this symmetry around the zero element left and right the negative uh, numbers and the positive numbers is very important to solve this problem using the caterpillar method or what is called by codility the caterpillar method so now we can continue solving the uh, example since we found absolute minus 3 equal to 3 so it's equal to this uh, particular element here 3 we're going to shift our attention to the element that's coming right after minus 3 so here it's minus 1 and the absolute value of minus 1 is 1 which is different than 3 so we have a distinct element and therefore we are going to increment our counter of distinct elements which is equal to 4 for now then we will be uh, looking for the element coming right before number 3 because it's greater than absolute minus 1 so we're going to look at number 0 and 0 is also a distinct element it's different than absolute minus 1 and then therefore we are incrementing one more time our counter of distinct elements so since these pointers to these uh, elements are now next to each others we can stop our algorithm and return the total number of distinct elements so now that we have seen two different methods to solve this problem let's see how to write these in c and in python so that's the first algorithm in c we have our solution function it's given the parameter which is the vector or the array a and for each element of a we're going to uh, transform this into the absolute value of the element ai then we are going to sort a the uh, absolute values of a in increasing order we're going to uh, set our counter to one distinct element for the moment and we're going to go through the um, sorted array a the absolute values of a and check each consecutive elements if they are different in which case we are going to increment our counter of distinct elements at the end we return c the counter and that's it very straightforward and very easy in python the um, solution is even more concise and more elegant to write so we have our solution function we have our list a that is provided by the problem so first of all we're going to uh, check the absolute values and for this we are going to uh, simply multiply each element of um, array a by itself so we're going to do the squares of each elements of a this would allow us to get rid of the signs the negative signs in uh, the elements and then we're going to cast the um, array a into a set and the reason we do this is that sets do not allow for repeated elements so it's going to get rid of repeated elements automatically in python and then we recast these into a list at the end we can return the length of a which is now a list of distinct elements now to solve this using the uh, caterpillar algorithm we can proceed as we have described in the algorithm section we have our counter variable which is equal to one at first then my maximum value for the moment is the maximum between the absolute value of the first and the last element of a and then we have the index of what we call the head of the caterpillar and the index of the tail of the caterpillar which are positioned at uh, zero which is the first element and the last element of a so length of a minus one and so we're going to shrink this caterpillar length between the head and the tail and get these indexes closer to each others as long as there are at different distances so as long as the index of the head is less or equal than the index of the tail and at this point the head is equal to the absolute value of a of the index of the head so this is the value that is contained or the absolute value of the element a index of the head if the head is equal to my maximum in this case we have two um, equal absolute values and we are not going to increment our uh, counter c here which is incremented at the end of this loop so as you notice we have if head is equal to my max in this case we simply move the index to the next element so index head plus equal to one and we continue our loop so we are going to jump at the beginning of this loop again and again in this case we didn't increment our counter of distinct elements which is the variable c but if the head 
is not equal to the maximum value, the current maximum value, we're going to test if the tail is equal to that maximum value in this case. So if tail is equal my max, then I'm going to change the index of tail. I'm going to decrement it by one position. So we're shrinking the tail of the caterpillar and we are going to continue skipping uh, the incrementation of the counter of distinct values in this case because we have found non-distinct values uh, for this particular element. But if neither the head nor the tail is equal to the current maximum value, we're going to check if the head is greater or equal than the tail, in which case we're going to change the maximum, which will be equal to head for now. At the same time, we're going to increment the index of the head by one, so moving our interest to the next element. And otherwise, if it's the tail that is the uh, greater value, we're going to update our maximum value to be equal to tail and we're going to shift our interest or our index tail by decrementing its value by one and in either cases if we reach this part of the code we're going to increment our counter of distinct values by one because if we have reached this part of the code it means that neither the head is equal to the current maximum nor the tail is equal to the current maximum and therefore we have distinct values of uh, of the elements and then when the uh, while loop finishes going through all the array elements from both sides the head and the tail we're going to return c which is the number of distinct elements in this array so yes that's it for this problem i hope you guys found the solutions helpful until our next video happy coding and see you next time